This is Gerd Leonhardt, futurist and keynote speaker, now virtual keynote speaker, giving a new app a try. It's called MMHMM. I think that's a tough name to pronounce, but hey, uh, Phil, the founder of MMM, was also the founder of Evernote, so he should know something about naming companies. So uh, MMHMM, that's the app, and you have to go on a waiting list and, and ask for a... a, a, a a submission and then you'll, you'll eventually you get a code to participate. One thing I really like about the app is that you can do stuff on the pad, right? So for example, if you go like this, you go up and down, you can fade yourself in and out. That's using the trackpad on the, on the, uh, on the MacBook here. And that's a pretty cool effect. Uh, that's easily done. When you squeeze it, you can change your size, right? So you can make it smaller or bigger. You can move it around, of course, using the mouse, but uh, like this, you know, you can squeeze yourself away and move yourself around the window. Uh, when you're presenting by yourself, like I do usually, um, it's quite a good idea to use a tool like this where you don't have to constantly look at the computer because you do want to look at the camera like I'm trying to do all the time. And the other cool tool is, of course, let me change the background so this is, uh, so you get used to what I'm doing here, right? I can have a library of backgrounds and put them in here and just kind of toggle through them if I want to. And then again, I can move myself around. I can make myself a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. Uh, and that, of course, takes some time to get used to it. And I'm still working on it, of course. But that is a really great feature. Uh, once I get used to doing it without looking, it will look a lot better than, uh, you know, not looking at you guys, of course. Um, you could change uh, toggling with the space bar will change the background picture with the presentation picture, right? So the background picture right now is this Star Trek-y thing that I have in the background. That's called a room, and it's a very powerful feature. Not really that needed much for me because I like to use full, full integrations with virtual backgrounds like I do in my other talks. That you can see, by the way, on gert.life, uh, how I do that with my other stuff. But in any case, yeah, this is a pretty useful feature. Uh, the presenter can also be put into a bubble, right? So this is quite interesting. So I could say, okay, uh, I'm going to make it a round one like this, and I can also make the size bigger like this, right? So let's say like this, so I can, I can just float around down here or, you know, for that matter, I can float around on the stage and I can make that bigger, of course, as well. And the cool thing about this is it's actually tracking my face pretty well. So I can, I can be in the camera and I can be automatically tracked even when I'm moving over here. It will follow me, you know, pretty much in real time. That's pretty cool. So let's imagine I'm going to use a different background. I can float around the office like this. So that's pretty useful. Um, somehow I'm still wishing for the shortcuts uh, to be more elaborate. So I can do that with the shortcuts. I think Phil, the, uh, the CEO and founder, he did show at one point some sort of a PlayStation control, which I would, you know, love to have so I can cruise around like this. But then again, you know, I'm kind of wondering if this is getting to be a little bit much for the for the gimmick stuff, because, you know, obviously I'm trying to make my talk more important than what it necessarily looks like. Uh, but yeah, these are the days of fancy, comp fancy presentations. So um, I will investigate further. There's other things you can do with the presentation tab up here, uh, including, of course, a rectangle, which I think could be interesting. You can also give yourself a different color. Again, that's a, I feel a little bit gimmicky to me, but there may be occasions where this could be useful. And you can, of course, color that differently. And you can, of course, also uh, increase that in size once again. This is the, uh, I think it's, it's interesting, especially when you're looking at the other functions that you might just still have to, yeah, zoom like this with the, uh, with the iPad, I think should work. Let me get rid of this. Um, so I can zoom like this, I can fade myself in and out like this, which I think is really quite the, probably one of the best tools I like about this. And making it bigger, I think you're getting used to the trackpad like this obviously uh, would be an interesting challenge. Let me go back and, and um, put myself back here into the silhouette. And again, this works really well because I use the green screen. It doesn't work well when you don't use the green screen. So everything starts with the green screen. Right. That's pretty much what it comes down to. I found presenting online, having a green screen is huge. Um, and I have a pretty good green screen. And I forgot to mention, of course, I have studio lights. I have a light up here. I have a light in the back. I have a light from the side. I have a big monitor over here. So I have a pretty big setup, and it took me some time to get into it. Uh, you can see here, by the way, I think that the green screening sometimes leaves a frame around you. So that is not so exciting. But 
hey, you know, it's it's a cool setup and fairly simple to use. So, you know, two thumbs, five thumbs up, you know, for <laughs> what Phil and his team have created here. I really like it. I'm going to show you a few other features with how I do stuff. So what I do is I use videos, I make them in Apple Keynote, and I also want to show how I use Apple Keynote. So when I use movies like this in the background, um, I can move myself around also just by using the mouse like this, right? I can say, okay, in this one, I want to be on the left, or I want to be smaller, I want to be a little bit opaque, which I think I, I already am here. So uh, this is one of the things where I'm saying like, you know, maybe I don't want to be so opaque. I'm going to put myself into, into full mode here. Um, so that, that's pretty good. And again, there's a way of, of uh, getting the background, putting the slide on, on the site. Um, that's, for example, if you have a background, I'll show you real quick here, a room that is maybe like, you know, really plain like this, then, um, you know, this would be useful by going back and forth with the space bar so you can present full or you can zoom yourself back. Um, again, it takes, will take a little bit of practice, but I think, you know, if you don't want to get too gimmicky, this works really well. I love the stuff I can do with my other things, like, uh, let's say I have this video here, okay? And I'm talking about the four challenges of the corona times, uh, the virus, the pandemic, uh, in the U.S., inequality, and of course, you know, the rise of extreme capitalism. And then the next thing is, of course, climate change and adaptation. And uh, the, in the, the stuff in the background is ongoing. That's a video. And then I superimpose the images on top of it using Apple Keynote. So that, that's something I really like. Um, I also like uh, ghosting like this. You know, here's my uh, friend Zuckerberg. Um, trying to defend himself in, in front of the council a couple of days ago, the U.S. Congress. Congress. So uh, this kind of stuff you can do pretty well. One big drawback here, which I find uh, I, I would prefer if there was audio. You know, why is there no audio? Of course, I, I realize you can't plan everything at the same time. But there should be an audio output from the slides. I think that would really help by being able to show stuff. Yes, you can share the, your screen, you can share YouTube and stuff. But that's another effort, and, and I still haven't figured out how the audio is going to come through. If I use the audio uh, from my camera, then nothing else would come through, so it would have to be from the computer. So, Phil, please do add audio, and that would really make it more exciting also to add a few other bells and whistles, like I've been doing lately using a sampler, which I'll show you some other time, to play music and audio recordings into the live show. And my next video, video will be on that, so you can understand how that all works. I'll show you a few more things that I do, like this one I quite like, you know, where I'm, um, I'm using a video background and then on top of that uh, using animations that a second layer of videos coming in that I have exported as a video to go right in here, also using Apple Keynote. So when I speak about this, I, I speak about the coming renaissance of America. As unlikely as that sounds right now, <laughs> uh, I, I speak about how America is going to pivot and turn around next year and, uh, and become a global power again, a truly uh, interesting power. I also use it to uh, superimpose things like this, you know, or like my own living room. This is right here in Zurich, and I can place myself in here and paint myself in and out. And that, all that stuff is a pretty cool. Um, I think, you know, using the trackpad is, you know, quite obviously a... Uh, uh, something that I like to mess around <laughs> with and I probably shouldn't be doing that on camera. So that's pretty much it. I quite like the app and here's a few things that I'm doing with this app that I find makes my life a lot easier and I think I'll use it a lot in the future. I have a pretty big setup here now for streaming online and doing my online, online keynotes but here's in a nutshell what I'm using right now. So a MacBook and of course the MMH the M app on there. <laughs> And I have a uh, Black Mirror 4K camera, and that is running with an Elgato Cam Link, which converts the HDMI into the USB here on my MacBook, so I can actually use a camera like this as a USB, USB virtual camera. So I'm using that to feed my camera, connecting directly to the microphone. That's a Rode HS2. It's the best microphone. And a wireless transmitter, the Rode Cam Link, which is the best because... Uh, if you keep the batteries fully charged, this is the safest way without much crackle to get the sound directly to the camera without delay. Keep in mind that you will have a delay if you are using the camera with a separate device. So go directly into the camera. Any sort of DSLR camera will do the same thing. Uh, just make sure you get the cam link, the Elgato cam link. That's about 150 bucks. Definitely worth it. 
converts it into uh, whatever USB you're going to use as a virtual camera. So that feeds into here, and that is the camera I'm going to use. With the mm, and of course, the sound as well. Okay. Behind me is a green screen. I, uh, I hope the whole wall is a green screen. This is really kind of mandatory. And without that, you're not going to get good quality rendering. And the chroma key, that's what you need for the green screening, is already built into this app, which is pretty cool. It works well. Uh, there are a couple drawbacks, of course. Chroma keying is difficult. I usually use an ATM Pro Mini, Mini Pro Mixer, that has chroma key built in. But that's a different story. I will tell you about that some other time. Right now, I'm trying this. So th this works pretty well, as you can see here. But just as a final word, yeah, this is the time to pivot. I'm a keynote speaker. I'm used to speaking on large stages, and now I'm pivoting into, well, I don't know, some kind of online virtual presenter, but I also do a TV show, watch for the announcement very soon, and I'd love some feedback from the mm, people, Phil and his team. Really cool app. You know, I think uh, I could give you some pretty, pretty interesting ideas about where you can go with this. So a thumbs up to mmhmm.app. Mm, -M 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 Take a look, get an invite. Thanks for signing in. Bye.